Good afternoon, or good afternoon, good morning. Um, so let's start with Coney. Let's see what happened in April on the 9th. So yesterday, coin, the underlying, moved down from 256 to 242. So it had a 5.46 retracement. And we only went down in Coney 2.6. A lot of people always say, well, why? How, how can you not go down, right? Because sometimes the underlying rises a lot and we're capped and we can't rise. Well, in this case, we're getting weeklies. Um, we're profiting from that. So we were very, very close. Oh, and so by the way, there were three trades. I had to wait and get those from one of my friends because when I checked the website for the trades, the interday trades, I couldn't find them. Um, but luckily somebody gave them to me, so I got everything updated as soon as I could. But I had done all the legwork. I, I was able to get them on uh, Misty. Okay, so three trades were put on. Let's go to the synthetic. So they added 545 so that brought us up to currently 16,420. Now keep in mind, when they put them on where they're below the strike price, they actually pocket some money. So they made almost 200,000 on this, you know, buy the call, sell the puts because we're underneath the strike price, right? So we still have some premium in the put below the 250 because we're at 242.95. But the bad news on the synthetics is it cost $11 million to close that out. The good news, we have till 419, so eight trading days. Uh, so the perfect scenario for us, let's go over here to what we sold and what we have active. So the other one besides the buy the call and sell the put on the synthetic. We did those at 5.45. We bought $10.11 for the calls, okay, expiring on 4.19, and uh, we collected $13.61. So what does that look like for the call that we put on? Well, ironically, uh, separate call, right, the weekly, we went out with only three trading days and put on a 257.50, which we had a bulk of those, right? We had 15,875, so we added 545. So now we have the same total on the synthetic and on our weeklies. The bad news is they're all in one common place, or sorry, one strike price. Let's take a look at those under active. I actually listed them like this because I still think like an accountant where, okay, I got different prices for them, but the reality is on active, they're the same strike price, right? So they're 5.99% out of the money. Remember yesterday when the day started, we were so close. We were like 256.99 to a 257.50 strike. Now we got a little breathing room, but again, we got three trading days. This thing can pop up that in one day. Implied volatility, when I had 91.30 going down to 91.28, I'm starting to put arrows here, either up or down, but in this case, it was so close, I didn't bother. So let's talk about our trade price over here. So again, 546, we only went down 260. We collected 162,000, almost 163,000, right? So our short income uh, on the weeklies is up to 8.2 million. So we're doing good there. I think it's around 52 cents when I look at payments. Yeah, 52. And we collected a little bit on the synthetic. So we got a penny's worth to distribute over there. And I'll talk about the calls. We had, uh, well, we didn't have a big buy-in here. We had a significant buy-in to, to Misty. So as you can imagine, when these funds sell off and they just got done being two of the top, two of the top three uh, distrib distributions in terms of just dollar amount, right? Um, 
so they're very popular young funds that are growing so we had a hundred and fifty thousand go into this one so when we look at holdings it was 0.96 percent so less than one percent additional shares were bought well whenever people are buying into the fund your cash goes up so they tend to put the money in use right um, so again on that tab 257 we only got two dollars and 99 cents but we only have three trading days so you're always in danger you run past that strike that strikes only good to 260 but since we're at 242 let's hope we collect that the bulk right look at this and i talked about this yesterday that's eight million dollars so now we have about 8.2 million writing on these weeklies so we really want that below 257.50, right? So we collect all that premium. Uh, and we're at 242, so it's possible. Uh, the chart's not indicating much movement, but it's hard to tell um, unless volume comes in. I mean, magically, let's see what the CPI does today, right? That's out at 8.30 Eastern. That's going to make the markets move one way or the other. Don't know, right? Don't know what the CPI is. Is it running hot? Do people see it as a positive? Um, so we'll see what happens there. Talked about the synthetics. Let's go over the holdings a little bit. Um, and again, I try and put this arrow in for what happens here, right? It's a green arrow for up and a red arrow for down. Uh, we closed at 25.38 with our total assets divided by the current share count. Um, and we finished trading at 25.46. So we're at about an eight cent premium here uh, to the net asset value. Uh, sometimes it's a discount. Um, so again, all of our, I could just drag this down here, um, but the reality is all of these guys are setting here uh, at the same strike price, right? So if that, if we expire and collect all of that, that'll be fabulous for this weekly. Um, the good news, bad news, let's go over here to the active again and talk about this. All right, so we've got three trading days. Let's go over the positives. Coin is consolidating based on the chart, chart pattern, so maybe no rapid rise this week. I think highly likely we don't, okay? possible we continue to consolidate but ha but having is getting nearer so we moved up some let's yeah in in coney they're all in one boy in misty we added some more and we've got five different strike prices so we're really varied and we're significantly under all those the bad news there is we really need to get above the synthetic by 419 we're close to the synthetic here <clears throat> but still, I want to see the same thing happen in Coney. So what are the negatives, right? They're all in one strike price, and the synthetics really need to move. Um, so I, I covered payments. So we moved to 8.2 because we collected some more on the weekly. But again, this can disappear if we don't, you know, put this all to bed by not closing over 257.50. And the share count went from 15,600 to 15,000. But that's not bad, really. Almost the first, really, the first week into trading, uh, and we're collecting 50 cents, right? If we do that every week, there's $2. Uh, we left a NAV reserve of $3.61 on the table. So if we keep at this pace and don't get hurt on our synthetic, which is a big if, we could see another high $2 payment. So I'm hopeful there, but the synthetic is what's really going to trigger. It will cost us $11 million if we close that today. That would wipe out all the gain uh, in the synthetics if we're able to not run past 257, right? Well, if we ran past 257 going into 419, then these are going to expire worthless, right? So we want to be anything above 250 and we collect some money on our call. Anything 
250 or above, these expire worthless, so the 11 million goes away. So we're getting closer on 419, guys. Uh, let's talk about the, the cash a little bit. So w with the money coming in, oh, I can take you through the April tab for that. It's not a big deal, but you can see 4 million went up. A lot of that just has to do when they sell new shares. Because look at this, the money went right over here to cash. They haven't even had a chance to distribute it out across their their first American government or their treasuries, right? So they're earning the 5% the yield on that. All right, so I think that kind of paints the picture of Coney. Let's jump in to Misty. And actually, I got a sheet on Misty's trades. So let me drag that over before we go there. This is very similar to what Coney did. Different strikes, obviously, and different counts. So they bought more calls, sold short more puts on their synthetic, which is 1700 Okay. So by doing 1700s with a 419 expiration, they don't have to spend much for the calls because they're way below it, right? They're at 1441 at the close. So whenever this was put on, it doesn't cost a lot with eight trading days. And look at what they're able to sell the puts. The bad news is they would get killed if by 419, we're not somewhere near 1700, right? That cost us a lot of money. That would use up, you know, a lot of that $4 we left in the piggy bank from. But I, I think we'll get closer. I really do. I'm, I'm pretty positive on that. And certainly after the halving, typically is when... Um, the money pours into something like this. So we got $28.50. So let's take a look at both the synthetic, okay, that they added. Here's our April, whoops, that's in my April tab. I actually want to go to the synthetic. So here's where we sold 75, or sorry, we bought 75 calls and it costs us $35 a contract, right? So we spent 262000 Remember, we're doing this at a synthetic that's way out of the money. So when we sell these puts, it's a big risk, but we collect $2.1 So that's about 900000 right, that we collected in cash. Um, so, but we stand to lose $12 million, right? Well, we're still significantly behind the eight ball here uh, in that scenario. And you can see that when we go over to our holdings. Let me see if, in, let's go over to the active. So we add, by adding that 28.5, let me show that again to you. So we'll go here to April. So here's where we sold that guy, right? So we sold 75, 28.5, and we sold it down at 15.30, right? So it's another new strike. Look at all our strikes, 19.20, 17.05, 17.50, 16.57. It keeps dropping, and we keep selling more calls as people buy in the fund, seeing it's, it's on sale now, right? But we're starting to get down where we're 6.21 and 9.55% out of the money. So look at these guys. We collected 689, 1.2 million, a small 44,000, 146,000 on the 8th, and then on the 9th we collected 213,000. Now, all this needs to do is close below 1,700 and well, be, you know, into the low 17s for these guys. But here, this is close to 17, so let me show you those on active. Okay, here's where we stand. This row got added, right? So um, we added 75 more, but this time we're only 6, 17% out of the money. Because we're setting at 1441, by the way, I also introduced these arrows. So a quick look tells me, you know, what's happening. This went down seven points. So our IV, which is a measure of the premium on the, the options, and just the overall volatility of uh, MicroStrategy is what we're measuring here. Um, 
So Misty was down in price, MicroStrategy was down, and we were down about seven points on our implied volatility. But we can still pick up five, six dollars here this week, which would take us back above $40 in the, in the price if we can collect all of this weekly premium. So let's go and take a look at that weekly premium, right? Again, I pointed this out. So it's pretty easy when you're setting at 1441 with three trading days, unless something just unbelievable happened. This one, oh, what were my percentages in active? So we currently stand 33% out of the money here, right? I think there's little to no chance in three trading days that we're going to go to 1920. These are pretty, all of these first three, even this one, probably the only one that's got any chance and it, it could have a real chance. I mean, it could go up 6% today or tomorrow or Friday, right? And we wouldn't make money on this. We wouldn't lose a lot, but... Uh, so be it. The synthetics is what still worries me, right? Because we've got 419 just eight trading days away. So we went from an 8.6 million liability yesterday here to a 12 million liability now. So after the 49 close with only eight trading days to go. So normally what the fund managers like to do is close the synthetic out like on the Friday before, a week ahead, right? Because theoretically you're at 17 or above and then you've got money in your calls and your put is only worth a few dollars, right? If you're 1720 or 1750, you want to roll to a higher five, six weeks out into the ha after the halving period, right? Because this is the halving time frame, right? The estimates for 19420. And that's when the underlying like Bitcoin should really start moving, which in turn drives micro strategy since um, they're probably the largest single holder of, of Bitcoin. Okay, so let's see what else we'll go over holdings let's look at our payments so we're up to a dollar nine per share and our short call is the the bulk of it right so we've got 2.2 million really in the short call which is like a dollar that's fabulous right but consider we got paid four last time and we left 461 on the table this week isn't going to determine everything, but I tell you next week with that synthetic, that absolutely is going to either cost us a lot of money. So we got to trust that this thing is going to move. Let me take a look at the chart and see if there's anything in here. You know, you know, our MACD, we're still on a negative, but this thing can turn around with volume again. I'm looking for volume, not volume in Misty. I'm looking for volume in MicroStrategy, right? Because when I chart this compare, the volume in the stochastic is only on the first uh, chart. I mean, it's only on the first. It doesn't really take into account Misty. It takes into account a MicroStrategy. All right, let's look at holdings and I'll wrap this up. 300,000, guys. 14.29%. So again, I think a simpleton looks at this and says, oh my God, nobody's ever paid $3. This fund paid $4. So greed is going, okay, well, let me buy it. It's on sale. Generally, it's all true. If everything bears out like I expect after the halving, we'll be doing great. But could we have a hiccup this month and only earn a dollar and maybe get a $2 payout because they pay another dollar out of the... Yeah, it could easily happen, right? It could be worse. But I'm not thinking that way. But in the short term, anything can happen. But I feel pretty confident on that. You know, you always have to ask yourself. I had somebody write me this. If you don't feel bullish on the underlying stock in these single stock funds. Don't buy into it for the income only. You can get in a, a single stock fund where your NAV goes down 80%. I mean, it's just performing horribly. You're getting killed on your synthetics. 
because these funds do bullish bets. But when they write these naked calls, when they write the weeklies, if the underlying is going down, typically even if they go out a little bit or right at the money, they're going to collect all that premium so they can pay out. But who wants a 50% annual dividend and a 70% erosion in your, in your NAV price, right? Nobody wants that. So if you can get one that stays close to its value um, and pays out a big, then you look at total return, right? That's what happens when you get a 50% annual distribution and a 60% loss in your NAV, you have a minus 10% total return. Doesn't matter that you got money every week. I mean, you give me a bunch of money and I'll give you back less than what you gave me every week. You're getting money, but you're losing your principal, right? So just keep that in mind. I'm only bullish right now in MicroStra in the Misty and in Coney. I'm not touching the other funds right now. I'd love to get more dividends and spread it out, but I'm sort of bearish on the NASDAQ and the general stock indexes going forward. I think we're very close to a top. Uh, I'm, I, so my other personal trades, I'm long Newman, I'm long GDX. I, I think the commodities, the metals, we've got other things al along with uh, uh, crypto in terms of what's going to succeed near term. So I, you always ask yourself that question, right? So that's why I report on these two funds because I'm in them, I'm bullish on them, and therefore I hang in there. If I'm not bullish, it's, it's dumb to be, you know, dividend driven where you're losing your nav and you're losing, uh, you have a big capital loss there. Okay, guys, done with that rant. Um, I think in holdings, Again, 14% of, that just says the popularity and or the greed, right? So uh, here we are, uh, summary, 16 million and two, this is where we stand to gain on the calls, right? On, and that'll just disappear. I mean, we're at 1441, so next week, if we're in the 16s, this will be down to almost nothing. And yet... We're $295 below this, almost, right? There's a little bit of time premium, but most of the 1,700 to subtract 1,441, right? You get 259, so that's still significant. So here's our all of our calls. We still got money to collect, guys. Again, um, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Okay, let's get going on Misty and Coney and have a great uh, day ahead guys. Let's see what the CPI does for us. Okay, bye for now.